So we're back playing Storm of Zay here, uh, and Volo has asked us to go find the stake of a dinosaur. Now there are dinosaurs all over the place, but apparently they're not big enough to eat, so we have to go and find this Mega Raptor here. Now, we will fight Mega Raptors again much later in the game, um, and they will be much harder than this one, which is kind of a pushover. Supposedly it's old and weak. So we're going to, you know, just do what Darwin wants us to do and, uh, uh, you know, get rid of the weak and, and uh, those that are not uh, fit. So... You know, real hard. But we're not going to go hand that in just yet, because we have other work to do. We need to go talk to some gnomes. So, uh, the gnomes are just northwest of the Yuan Ti Temple, um, kind of the northwest side of the map, and I'll meet you over there. So here we are at the lumber camp, and, uh, well, you know, there are gnomes. It's better to come here at night. There's a, an event that only happens at night, but, you know, you can just rest and get there. So we can kind of talk them. And they tell us more or less that Luare has not showed up. So, you know. And, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot to do here. Um, there are a couple of quests. But we do this uh, Ari Golemkin here as a merchant. And she's the best merchant in the game when it comes to selling stuff. She doesn't have much money, but... Uh, he may as well get rid of it, because she pays excellent prices for things. So I'm going to do that and be right back. She also sells the Chime of Opening, which is a uh, essentially 50 castings of Knock. It's pretty much all the lockpicking you'll ever need for the entire game. Um, though this guy can also cast Knock if push came to shove. So I'm just going to buy that and use that instead of bothering with the open lock skill. So I'm also buying... She has a full set of the Summon Elemental um, I inventory items. So I'm going to buy one of those for Acetam and one of those for Selic, so that if we want the entire party to summon something, they all have something worth summoning. Uh, Selic already has the, the genie, but the genie is all one time per day only, so it's sometimes not available. And now we go and talk to Dal Nickel Plate. And he wants pesky dinos killed. And we already killed some dino, dinos, so, you know, it's now. Then there's a missing part, and anybody with spellcraft or good crafting can just get 1,000 free XP and then 700 free XP for completing that, and uh, that's everything. So um, we can now just head back if we want. But... Um, I'm going to have to level up off screen. And, uh, you know, this guy has uh, is the local um, monster parts merchant. I'm not going to mess with him at this point. But let's see if we can find uh, all of our leveling. And we'll all level off screen and be back. So the tent keeper here is the inn. And... Um, you can talk him down a little bit, but uh, there's not really much else to do here. There's another quest, um, but you have to leave the area first and get some other things done. So I will leave that alone, but eventually I do have to deal... Well, I don't have to deal with it. It's not all that important to quest. There are these herb shrubs here um, with healing herbs, which are essentially potions that cure moderate wounds. And just as far as the other quest goes, if you look back here, there's a mound of earth, but you don't can't do anything with it yet. So, well, that's pretty much all there is to do at the lumber camp. We were able to resolve it all pretty quickly because we have the the correct skills. Sometimes you have to actually do some additional work. But hey, look, it's another random encounter. Some diseased town folk. Since somebody in our party actually has heal. Um, well, that doesn't help, actually. So, we're just going to have to beat them. Not surprisingly, that was a trivial fight. So, we're just going to head back to Samargol, and I'll meet you back. So, here we are back in Samargol. We are... Let's just talk to Volo. 
give him his stakes and uh, you know pass and uh, yeah he doesn't have anything else for us so we're just about done with the quests on this side um, there's a second sort of map to this whole area um, so the, we're following up on the clues uh, and um, we're just going to have to talk to somebody who knows about poisons. Now, you know, it's not really very obvious, but Vidinia is kind of our resident. I mean, she's a tiefling. She must be evil, right? Yeah, so, um, you know, she tells you where to go, and um, we'll end up going there. And I'll meet you back on the map. So, um... Where we're going, it's marked on the map. It's this choke mist cave. You can't find it until somebody tells you about it. So I'm just going to head over. So we're on our way over, we ran into this random tower. So I'm going to go visit it. So this is just a random side area with a couple of bugbears. So let's kill them. That was hard. Now, if you look at the map here, um, there is a whole peninsula of just sort of leading down here. Um, it doesn't have anything of real interest. There are a couple things, though. And uh, one other thing to keep in mind these clockroaches are part of a later quest, so I'm going to kill them. But here's the choke mist cave that we've been looking for. So we're going to go in. Now there's a fight here. It's not real hard, but you should be prepared for it. Uh, the one quirk to this area is there this gas stuff around here that you can see, the glowing green stuff, randomly casts confusion. So giving people bonuses to mines to will saves is a very good thing, and um, just be ready for people to randomly fail their saves and do stupid things. So I'm going to be a buff and be right back. So. Luari's here, and you know, you can talk to him, but it pretty much all ends the same way, and you have to fight him. And then you just have to kill off these corrupted spiders. And it's really not a very hard fight if you're buffed up. If you don't buff up, it can be kind of interesting if somebody gets confused. But other than that, I'm going to head back to Samargal. But first, actually, I'm going to explore that peninsula of the south. So I'm going to clean up and then be right back. Oh, and Luari has a weapon, which is okay. I mean, it's acid damage and enhancement bonus plus one, but it's nothing as good as the ones we can make now. So it's really irrelevant. So we're just off exploring now. Out here on the coast is a uh, crypt with some stuff. It's nothing particularly interesting, actually. So I'm just showing it because it's here. Predictably, there are a lot of enemies standing around. They're very basic undead, and when you open the crypt, they'll attack you. And that's really all there is to this area. I'm not going to show any more of it. So, heading south of the Choke Mist Cave, there's um, a little more. There are a couple more areas down here, but they're all just about as pointless as that, um, that crypt we just went through. So I'm not going to show very much of them. I'll just sort of show the general layout and explain what's there, but... We're just out exploring, and really the only thing you get out of this is those history feats from Volo. Um, if you don't care about those, there's really no reason to go down here. Well, almost no reason. So this is the next set of ruins, and once again it's populated by, in this case, lizard folk, um, who pose no challenge whatsoever. But over here on the side, you'll see this thing called an Arcane Nexus. That's part of a later quest. You have to find six of them, and there are only five on the Sword Coast. So you have to come back to Samarak for one. Um, there's one at Tempest Fury, there's one in the Singing Cave. So it's not like you have to come out to this one, but that's there's something else out here other than just random junk. Heading back north on the east side of the peninsula, there's another cave over here. 
Um, this one is just as simple as the other ones, but we'll look in. Once again, there's not really a whole lot in these areas, but, you know, they're here. They're worth, they're part of Volo's little thing, so maybe worth doing it. This one's just a bunch of kobolds. Um, the other area we were just in also had a um, single chest, which had trap and a lock. Traps and locks are worth XP in this game, so ironically I get a lot more XP from just opening the chests than I do um, from fighting the enemies. If you break a lock open, you do not get XP. And just to get a sense of what's... All, yeah, two potions of cure moderate runes, very important. So I'm just going to walk back to uh, Samargal and meet you back there. Alright, we're back in Samargal. I'm just going to do this because I can. Um, this here is Bounty Collector Quasi, and uh, she gives sort of mini quests that don't give XP, just essentially to let you sell monster parts as a, as a batch and get a little more money for it. It's not a big deal. Um, but, for example, the, the first quest is for eight giant spider venom sacks, which is handy because you'll always run into those and have plenty of those from your time in the singing cave. Um, she also uh, has just a stock of these things, and uh, I'm going to buy clockroach parts because I need four of them and I only have two. Um, but if you run into a recipe that re requires one of these exotic items, uh, check one of these merchants. Things like drider silk, there are no driders in the game, so if you want to make an item that requires drider silk, you got to buy drider silk. Not a big deal, but you know it's there. While I'm in town, I'm also going to add a damage bonus to that bow I picked up from the Mind Flayers just to keep the mage on, you know, at least doing damage. So we just recipe shocking weapon on our composite long bow plus two of shock. Okay. So here we are handing in our quest. And we tell her, was, you know, he's a Yuanti and. Well, look, the guards overheard us. Well, that wasn't very smart of us. So Sasani tries to brush them off, and, well, they already know, so... The yuan T. Yeah, well, you know. So, um, more or less, we're going to be banished from town. It, it seems like you can't go through... Uh, any of the official campaigns in Neverwinter Nights 2 without being labeled a, an outcast and a criminal at some point. But, you know, hey, it's uh, part of the life of a hero, right? Okay, so that was some pretty cheesy dialogue. But that's pretty much it for this episode. Next episode, we head off to the Sword Coast because, you know, staying in exotic areas wouldn't be fun. And, you know, we have to go back to the boring vanilla area that every single Forgotten Realms campaign is set in. So, um... I'll meet you on the next video.